Bill Kirchin. I was born June 29, 1948 in Bridgeport, Connecticut, but wound up in Ann Arbor, Michigan within about six months. And that's where I grew up through high school and about a year or so afterwards. I actually picked up the banjo first because I was studying trombone at the National Music Camp in Interlochen, Michigan, and my cabin counselor played 12-string guitar. This was in the early 60s, folk scare time. Dave Siglin played guitar. I'm like, I need to get in on this. And I got found a banjo in my mom's attic, learned banjo from the Pete Seeger, how to play the five-string banjo instruction book. So I hitchhiked to Newport in 64 between my junior and senior years. And I went in 1964 and 1965. And that essentially is what happened to me. I, that ruined me for normal work at that point. It just was, I, I saw all the great country blues guys who were still alive, like Son House, Kip James, Robert Pete Williams, Reverend Robert Wilkins, and John Hurt. And in fact, the Blues at Newport 64 album, you can see a teenage me in the corner with a big grin on my face. I learned guitar, learned to play that, had a folk rock band, The Seventh Seal. Played, uh, somebody loaned me an electric guitar and I played with my plastic finger picks on a Fender Jazzmaster and any song I could come up with, like Dive and Duck Blues, I learned from a Sleepy John Estes record I played. And, and then I ran into the, the bunch of people who would end up forming Commander Cody and his Lost Planet Airmen. We ended up traveling around the country playing traditional American music, a lot of Bob Wills too, a lot of Eldon Shamblin and Tiny and Junior Bernard, playing music for rock and roll audiences. But it was a lot of traditional music, boogie woogie, western swing, rockabilly, and, and blood and guts country. So that I did from, say, 68, and I dragged the band out to California. We had some national success with a cover of a song, Hot Rod Lincoln. That We had that record in 72, maybe in the late 70s, early, I don't know, early 80s. Late 70s. I'm in a music store. He said, well, you were in Commander Cody? I went, yeah. He goes, well, who played that lick on Hot Rod Lincoln? I said, I did. He goes, really? Well, then, how the hell did you get from... How'd you get from the four chord and, you know, to the five chord, with, you know? And I went, well, uh, 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 I don't know, let's check. So me, staring at my hands, trying to play that lick, I could not play the lick slow. And, and I remember leaving the music store with him kind of looking at me like, loser, like, <laughs> <laughs> what a dumbass thing to pretend you did, you know. <laughs> Telecaster is like the bicycle or the Coke bottle of electric guitars. The bicycle end, it's the most efficient way to get from point A to point B. Look at it, it's, it's a slab of wood, a stick of wood, six strings, two knobs, two pickups, one three-position switch. It's just primitive. It's not even a sculpted body. It's a slab, you know. You can make this yourself. And, but um, but something about it, it's got a, a cachet to it, and it's got a sound. You sort of have to work. It's, it doesn't have all the sustain of a uh, Les Paul. It's not a heavy guitar, you know, so it has a little less sustain, but I think that lends itself to some more intricate, you know. It's also got traditionally a nice sharp body tone, you know. Nice low end. I mean, you got to understand that this was pretty much the first production electric guitar. And the fact that it survived, although this isn't made by Fender, this is a copy of essentially of the guitar that they were making in 1949. And it survived as a, uh, for 60 years now, as a. What happened was they were basically trying to imitate an, an acoustic guitar or an electrified acoustic. And along the way, the technology begat its own sound and 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 people started following the sound that it was capable of producing the electric that an acoustic guitar wasn't capable of producing and it was so important in the honky tonks because back when as you were mentioning music was uh you know it was to dance to and to perhaps even to fight to you know, or whatever but it, it was it, you had to be cutting and loud and and it fits so well with the with the west coast honky tonk scene that this was the instrument of choice my really true original comp contribution to the canon of electric guitar licks. And this is something that I came up with by accident. It goes... <laughs> There was a 
sense of community that developed. I'm really struck by what a sense of community there was, and because that's what I love about music. I know a zillion great people that I've met through music, and that to me is like, that's what it's all about, really.